this segment of Feature Friday, we're here with Ms. Edwina Clank, one of the dynamic entrepreneurs and leaders right here in Stonecrest, Georgia. Thank you for coming, Ms. Clank. Glad to be here. Good to have you today. So, Ms. Clank is the owner and broker for East Metro Brokers, East Metro Real Estate, LLC, right here in Stonecrest. And so I want you to tell folks a little bit about your company, who you are, and what you how you feel about Stonecrest. So let's just let's start and just tell me what East Metro Brokers is and what you guys do as a company. All right. So I started East Metro Brokers about a year ago. And um we do we sell commercial and residential and I do a little property management. Okay. I'm loving real estate, I'm loving all in my own company. And to give you a little bit of history. All right. Um, not two years ago, um, I was out knocking on doors, and I've never knocked on doors before. I didn't know how I love that, how I love meeting people, and it played right into my role as a real estate agent. I could walk up to people. I was knocking on doors for my husband to become a city councilman. Okay. So, I said, I know this. I said, I can knock on doors and ask people if they want to sell their home. So, I can be a successful real estate agent. I didn't know I had that in. Wow, you know, I, I've known you now, you know, since I've been here in Stonecrest. It's been about four years, but I didn't know that's how it started for you. Yes, I just, I was a real estate agent, but I was sitting at home. I was mm-hmm. working in my community volunteering mm-hmm. because they say that the, the service that you give is the reward that you live in life. So, I was serving my community, doing things that my community and not doing a little, picking up a little real estate, but I wasn't really involved in my real estate. Okay. When I started knocking on doors and talking to people and realizing that I had some leadership in me, it was like an hour. And it was just such a shame that I had to wait this long in my life to realize what I had in me. Man, that is awesome. That is, you know, what's so interesting about that is, as entrepreneurs, the first thing in business that must happen is the sale. Yes. And so many people have this fear and this this notion that, oh, I don't want to be vulnerable. I don't want people to think I'm bugging them. Right. And we don't sell our businesses right. the right way. Right. And, and, uh, and one of the most effective ways, when I was in the funeral business, we used to call it field tackle, right. where you just go and meet people. And so many people are afraid of that. So you never had that fear. Or did you have that fear? You just overcame it. I, ne- I didn't know I didn't. I just, I just, I love meeting people. And I was doing it in my community. Mm-hmm. So then when I extended it over into my profession, I went, wow, I've been missing out all this time because I never thought about or I fear knocking on a stranger's door. I just don't have any fear anymore. If I see someone having a yard sale, I just go right up, knock on their door, hey, I see you having a yard sale, a state sale, do you want to sell your house? I mean, the boldness of selling is what divides people that are good and bad. I've loved it. And I'm going to tell you something else that has been real encouraging to me. When I met Mr. Allen a couple of years ago, and I heard his story, I never thought about being an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Okay. I mean, my dad was a W-2 all his life. He made a good living. He retired from three or four jobs, and that's all I saw, mm-hmm. and that's all I knew. Mm-hmm. When I heard Mr. Allen's story, I thought, oh, that's why I'm the way I am, because I mimic my dad. I said, I can take on a new mindset and become a new person because what I wanted to do was be a real estate agent. I wanted to be that boldness. I wanted to I wanted to do all those things I saw other real estate agents doing that was in the big books. So when I heard Mr. Allen's story and he talked about ownership, 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 that just touched my heart. I was like Man, if anybody can do it, I can do it. Wow. And when I perceived it, I was a real estate agent. And it was like one day I was just sitting there, and it seemed like the Lord just dropped it in my heart. Go get your broker's license and go on your own. And that's exactly what I did. In a month's time, I had my broker's license, and I was trying to figure out how to set up my business. I'm telling you. I wish that I knew what I knew today. I wish I knew it years ago. 
But it's who you surround yourself with. It's who you get knowledge from. And with my time, I was just around people who just went to war. I didn't know that it was another life. But this is, I'm telling you. Man, that's great. Now, you gave me some nuggets. I got to get a few little bites in here. <laughs> so the first piece, the first piece of this story, and again, you did a great job of, of really identifying what our founder is trying to embody with all of his investments. The first piece of your story, though, let's break this down because I want to make sure people understand exactly how to replicate it because that's a dynamic story. One is, Mr. Allen always says, exposure expands expectations. So when you were exposed to Mr. Allen and the Institute, it expanded your expectations. That was the first thing. And the second thing that you mentioned that was so powerful was that Mr. Allen always talks about how you think is everything. And that wealth begins in the mind and then goes to the pocket. And your story illustrates that so well because what you're saying here is you were just thinking you had only been exposed to a certain thing. So that was where you thought. But then when you were exposed to something else, you thought much grander and much bigger. But what was really important is that not only did you have the mindset change, but in 30 days, you took action. Yes. So tell me what that 30 days was like for you to take action and begin okay. going after your goal. Okay, so I have a lot of faith. And I always felt like it's one man who can do it. I can do it. Mm -hmm. So when he brought that in my spirit to go get my broker's license, I was nonstop trying to get things done. I went to see about the school. I went to see about the money. I went... I went to pass the test. I mean, it was just a ride that when I look back at it, I just, it's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable how your life can change in such a short period of time. And now I've been in business for a year and I've not stopped my life. Well, let's hold on. Let's hold on. <laughs> so, so you took action. You did. You laid out exactly what needed to happen right. and you made it. You worked the system. You worked the process and yeah. you got it done in 30 days. Exactly. All right, so now you have this brand new business. Right. So now with this brand new business, kind of tell us how you started, what are the things that you put in place, and kind of what were some of the wins, what were some of the things that maybe took longer. Tell us about that startup phase and when you started the business, how was it for you? Well, a lot of um, real estate people have like secrets, like they don't really tell you how much stuff costs. So cost is a factor that everybody that's starting up a business and if nobody tells you how much it costs, then, you know, you just fill it out in the blind. Okay. So, I started asking questions. I started going to the people that I needed my business to operate with. How much does this cost? How much does this cost? Because everybody says it costs a lot. Well, what is a lot? Okay. Well, what is a lot to you and what is a lot to me? It's a different thing. Right. So once I found out that the money, how much the money was going to cost me to run my business, mm -hmm. I this. I'm okay. up for the challenge. I can do this. All right. So I got everything in place. I mean, you, you talking about, it, it just seemed like it was effortless. You know, I could just do it with no problem. And I think that when God is walking me, hey, who could be against you? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And, and let me tell you, what's so important about your story is that so often, see, you're saying it's easy, but what is the narrative on entrepreneurship? People always say, oh, it's so hard. How we going to do And that, that, they always cry, right? But here's the key to what you did. Oftentimes, as entrepreneurs, we have deficit thinking. And deficit thinking says, well, I need a loan, or I need this, or I need that. The resources are there. You just got to do some fact finding, some digging. And, and the thing that's so amazing is that 70% of E500 companies were started with $15,000 or less. So a lot of times what we do, folks, is we put barriers in our path, and that's what makes it hard. It's all mindset. You know, and again, I ain't going to take nothing from the Lord, but it's the mindset and the way that you approach business. If you think with a deficit thinking of, I need a building, I need this, right. I need finance, you'll never get it done. So, you, so those of you who are out there, you've been making that excuse and sitting on that same job for 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, talking about, boy, next year I'm going to start that business. 
you got to quit playing with yourself. You got to quit tricking yourself and get real. And that's what I like about your story is it was easy for you because you did the research. And Mr. Allen, going back to our family, always says it. He says, one man, you have to recognize that there is a system and then learn how to use that system to get what you want. Right. And you have to invest in yourself. I continuously educate myself. I'm always in classes. I'm always networking, learning from other people that are higher than I am in my walk. And I'm just, you just have to invest in you and your business. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So tell me, your year. You've been up. So you've been in business for a year now. Yeah. Well, congratulations on making it through your first year. Yeah. That's always an achievement. And I have a lot of listings. So that's why I want you to go. You, you got, I ain't gonna let you interview no more. You keep. I don't even ask no questions <laughs> now. So that's what I want to know. So in this first year, tell me some of the wins that you've had and some of the things that you just have been, you know, excited about in your company. Tell me something. Tell, what has East Metro Brokers done that first year? Okay, so. Years back, I've been a real estate agent since 2002. Okay. So my, I've had a few closings every year, not much to speak on. They say the average real estate agent makes about seventeen thousand dollars a year. Okay. So that's why you see some of them do it part time. Mm -hmm. So last year, having that mindset change, it seemed like people were calling me left and right, not just the help them buy their real home, but to sell the one they're in. You know, I have some land down here. I need you to sell this for me. I have some, when I tell you, I don't know if it's just the perfect timing, mm -hmm. but, and, and another thing too, meeting people, the more you expose to people, the more they know you're a real estate broker, the more business they're going to be. They're going to think about you when they think about selling a buy. That's awesome. Yes. That is awesome. And you know, you made me think about one of my mentors and one of the people that I watch his content, Mr. Grant Cordon. And one of the things that he tells entrepreneurs is when you go in a room, learn how to speak to everybody. And no matter if you walk into a building, wherever you go, speak to people. And what he said is the more you do that, the more you increase your confidence. Because it takes confidence to continue. Hey, how are you doing today? Hey, good to see you. How are you doing today? But raising that confidence and connecting with people. And I think, you know, I'm one of those people that believe in energy and kind of karma and, right. and the laws of attraction. Right. And I think that that is part of it is that when you put yourself out there, when you envision things, you bring what you want to you. I'm going to tell you another entrepreneurial story that I love is Kathy Hughes, the owner of Radio One. She says that when she started Radio One, when I read her book, that she was going around and she had started a radio company and she was in business and she would go around and people would be like, how's business going? And she was like, oh, it's hard. It's this, that, and the other. She said, people just kind of ran from her. But then she said, you know, I just started speaking into existence what I wanted. And she said she would start telling people, oh, advertising's great. I'm doing a big project with Coke. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Da, 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 da. And she said people would just start, well, how did I get some of that? Can I do a project with you? Success breeds success. And so I'm, I'm excited to hear that that's what's happening in your business. And so tell me, what's the future now for East Metro Brokers for year two? What are the great things that you want to accomplish going forward? So this last year, I've been finding my way. But this year coming up, I'm trying to lay a foundation. When I when I named my company East Metro Broker, I named it a, a, a universal, a, a, not a name associated with me, because I want to be able to sell my company eventually. Right. I don't want to keep it. I want to be able to one day just go where I want to go and sell it. So I try to keep it independent so it can run on its own or I can sell it or whatever. And so that's what I'm working on now, laying a foundation. So getting all my policies, procedures, everything in place so I can start taking on agents. I've been offered to sit on properties for people and I don't have the agents right now. So I've been, it's just a little bit too much for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of waiting making sure I have my business plan in order. So it's, it's I, I got a lot. That's fun. awesome. And That's I have awesome. a lot of goals I want to accomplish. So. That's good. I mean, I think I think your story is really a great testament. And I think we have so many people here at Stonecrest that can benefit from your story because they, we have talent, we have people with resources, uh, and we have so much. And coming to the concept and the conversation about Stonecrest, um, you are one of the leaders of this community. 
Uh, your husband is Jimmy Clang. He's one of our council members. Um, and you sit on the Stonecrest Business Alliance and are very active in this community. So just tell us a little bit about, because it got this right here, all I'm going to do is just get out the way and let her do a thing. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your passion and what you feel about Stonecrest as a community. Okay. <laughs> so when I first heard about us ever trying to be a city of Stonecrest, I thought, oh my goodness, what a possibility. We finally can have the things everybody else has across the Cab County. You know, it's an opportunity for us to pull up our own books, take care of our own selves out here in Stonecrest. I thought, man, this is awesome. So when I heard about the vision, I bought into it. I'm still into it. I'm believing that we're going to have a world-class, first-class city. We have some of the richest people here, right here, black people, right here in Stonecrest. And we need to, we just need to capitalize on it, bring it, bring it forward, bring the richness of Stonecrest out. I, I don't give up hope. I keep hearing negative stuff, and sometimes it pulls me down because you want to fight every battle. But I got to keep my mind straight to know that what I heard first, and as no, I, the mayor, he's always had the vision of Stonecrest and what it could be. I bought into it, and I believe we can be that that place that he's always talked about. I believe we can have the jobs here, and when the jobs come, the schools will get better. I believe that we can be everything we want to be. I just, I, I just, the world is looking at us. They're depending on us to get through this, the standing up of the city. We're doing a great job, and I'm really, really proud of us. I really am. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, I, one of the things I hope that we can achieve with your firm and with the city and right here with this tool that Mr. Allen has afforded us is that we can really be the ground for people coming together and learning how to really take hold of opportunity. Now, Ms. Clan, your story is a perfect example of what it takes. You got to change your mindset. You got to do the research. You got to figure it out. But you can really be like you have to understand like this is a brand new city. We don't have a zoo. We don't have a museum. So you can be that person that creates it. You can be that person that creates the, the new uh, strip centers. You can be that person that creates the new multi-use development. Uh, and so what are some of the things that, that you want to do with East Metro Brokers to show folks how to take hold of these opportunities? And how can you use real estate kind of as that tool? Well, right now, I'm looking at, um, I, wanted, I do want to buy some commercial and some residential properties. I believe in having multiple streams of income. I believe that everything that we do in this city will help all of us um, improve the look of it. I mean, it's just so many opportunities here. Stonecrest is what's happening. I just love it. I'm not going to let anybody talk about it. <laughs> this is our hometown. And this is our opportunity. It's our opportunity to make it be whatever we choose for it. Yeah. yeah. So I knew you would. I knew that you would take care of that and run that ball right up the field. You did that. But it, but it is. This is our opportunity. This is our time. Tell us a little bit about what you're working on with the Stonecrest Business Alliance and kind of what what business owners who may be interested in that that organization how they can tap into the Stonecrest Business Alliance. Well, uh, the Stonecrest Business Alliance. When the new city took over, we were really active prior to the city taking over. And then once they took over, we kind of backed down so we could see what how we're going to fit into our role here in the new city of Stonecrest. So now we're kind of getting back involved. We're going to be pulling businesses in to the Stonecrest Business Alliance. We want to keep the business, um, we want to keep them abreast of what's going on in the government. So a lot, all of us, most of the board members, are very active in the city. So we keep the other business um, people, you know, uh, aggressive what's going on. And we want to try to get other um, businesses to come together so we can see how we can make our city better. There's so many things that we got to do. It's, you know, you don't think about it when, when, when say, Tucker became a city, they already had the groundwork to a lot of stuff. We don't. And it's now, we got to get our businesses on board. 
he had a um, shop stone. What was the other? Uh, uh, our best of stone press campaign. Best of stone press campaign. We got to get our business owners active in the city so that they can become a part. And so when they have, we have things that don't look good or bad customer service that they care about our city because it's going to take all of us to make this a great community. Yeah. Well, you have done it, and you create when you create the East Metro Brokers, guys. You all can do it as well. She's a living testament that you can make it happen right here in Stonecrest, and we need you to make it happen. These opportunities, we have more opportunities. To, we have more opportunities that we could ever handle with the people who are working aggressively in Stonecrest. There is plenty of room and plenty of opportunity for you, and so I think that you're the perfect example of what should be happening in Stonecrest. And Stonecrest is a perfect opportunity. And so I'm so excited to have you here with us. Any party words that you want to tell folks who may be out there watching that are sitting there thinking about doing it, what are your words to them of encouragement this morning uh, as we conclude this interview? All right. So i like to share with people, if you're on a job doing what you hate, you're in traffic for two and three hours a day, I'm telling you, you only get one life to live do what you enjoy doing. If I could talk to high school kids, I would tell them, don't get out of school to go get a job. Go get out of school to do what you are passionate about. Because when you are passionate about something, man, you can make money, you can serve people. That's what we're here for, to serve one another. And if you do what you're passionate about, things are going to hit you in life, but they're not going to hit you as hard when you're doing what you love doing. Yeah. And I enjoy real estate. And I think everybody ought to do what they enjoy doing. That's awesome. And if you do have real estate needs or you'd like to learn more about how to get involved with the real estate here in Stonecrest, how can folks find you, Ms. Clance? Give them the, the contact information on how they can find you. Well, you can go to my website, which is um, eastcentralbrokers.com. You can always Google my name and you'll find me all over the website. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hide because you can't be a seller and hide yourself. So I'm always available. My number is out there. Um, because just give me a call. All right. Well, thank you guys for this segment of, for joining us for this segment of Feature Friday. We're going to be back in just a moment. Thanks, Ms. Clant, for joining us. Right, thanks for having me. All right. All right.